hey folks, welcome back to another Timber Talk Tuesday. I'm Ricky McLean with Woodworks. As mass timber projects continue to grow in size, scale, and particularly in height, we as structural engineers need to understand the unique movements that mass timber projects have, specifically in the vertical realm. Now, we know from designing mid-rise wood frame projects that wood is a hygroscopic material, meaning it has the ability to absorb moisture, give off moisture, that can result in shrinkage and expansion of the material. Now, how that translates to a mass timber project, and particularly to a tall mass timber project, is where we need to understand material properties and some of the unique nuances of how we design and detail very tall mass timber projects. Now today's video is going to focus on vertical movements and particularly differential vertical movements of tall mass timber projects, both in terms of how much the timber itself is moving, as well as how much the timber is moving relative to other finishes and structural materials within a tall timber project. Now in today's video, we're gonna focus primarily on three different types of vertical movements in tall mass timber projects. The first being column shrinkage and shortening. This is an elastic PL over AE type of equation. This can include some creep effects. The second type of movement we're going to look at is both shrinkage and crushing of the elements that are in the shrinkage zone. That's primarily cross grain dimensions. So looking at beams, panels, and other elements that may be in that cross grain shrinkage and crushing zone. And the third type of movement we're going to look at is in connection settlements and material tolerances. Those are a bit harder to put an exact number to, but they do all play into this bigger picture of how much vertically is a mass timber project moving and again moving relative to other materials. Now I'm going to bring in a co-author of a paper that we're currently working on, Josephine Racine with Fast and Up, and together we're currently authoring a paper on this topic of vertical movements in tall mass timber projects. If you're attending the upcoming International Mass Timber Conference in Portland, Oregon in April of 2022, we will be giving a talk on this topic as well as releasing the paper at that same time. So this is a bit of a preview of things to come as we discuss vertical movements in tall mass timber buildings. So let's bring in Josephine for the rest of this discussion. All right, well, Josephine, thanks for joining me today. So knowing those types of vertical movements that we can expect in a mass timber structure in the timber elements themselves, when it comes to differential movements in a mass timber building, what types of differential movements are we expecting? Thanks, Ricky. So first, differential movement happens because all materials or elements in a building do not move the same way or in the same proportion. Um, and it's emphasized in taller buildings because, uh, because of the cumulative effect. When we are talking about differential movement in tall mass timber structures. We are generally talking about the movement of the timber columns um, between the timber columns and non-timber structural elements or non-structural components. Non-timber um, structural elements in tall wood buildings are uh, typically the lateral system, which is often concrete cores or steel brace frames. The concrete cores uh, will shrink, but are generally cast in before the timber arrives. Um, so that shrinkage will already have occurred. And um, shortening and creep are much less than the timber columns. So there will be a downward movement of the timber columns against the concrete core. Uh, for steel braced frames, uh, steel braced frame columns, um, there is also typically less shortening than the timber columns, than the timber gravity columns, and um, no creep. There is also differential movement within a same material, um, like for example, uh, timber columns between a timber columns and a timber, a timber bearing wall. Uh, different span, different loading can also uh, cause uh, dissimilar movement. Uh, one thing to note is that timber uh, is an organic material, which means it has some variability in its properties. And uh, for example, all, all the columns won't have the exact same stiffness, which will affect uh, shortening and creep. Well, one last important thing is the impact of differential movement on non-structural components uh, like partitions, 
cladding, MEP, and so on. Let me go back to a couple of things you mentioned. The majority of those, those items that you mentioned as differential movement potential were structural uh, systems, such as concrete cores, structural steel brace frames, and timber columns versus timber bearing walls. So those are all structural elements, meaning some type of a structural connection between all of those elements is necessary. So what are some ways that we can detail those connections that can accommodate or allow that differential movement to occur while still being able to transfer the loads that we need to do? So um, one of the first consideration for timber structures, I would say, is to isolate the perpendicular to grain shrinkage and crushing from impacting the overall height of the building, detailing a beam to column connection so that the load transfer directly from the column above to the column below will make things a lot better. To minimize um, differential movement, typically we do it by allowing for on-site shimming at the column connection. So this is an example of the detail used on Brock Commons, an 18-story mass timber building. These um, steel shim plates were placed at three strategic levels based on site measurements and anticipated movement. There is um, quite some variability within the assumption to calculate differential movement. Uh, the moisture content, the loading, the stiffness can vary from a column to another and will uh, vary during the life of the building. In that regard, it's important to not overestimate the shipping package and allow for flexibility at critical details. Um, for example, on intro, a nine-story mass timber building in Cleveland, we used oversized embed steel plates at the concrete wall to connect the timber beams. Um, this allowed for field adjustability by welding steel bearing plates on site at the right elevation. Um, you should also allow for flexibility at non-structural components. It's common to have track deflection at partition, control joints at cladding, use of flexible stack joints for vertical plumbing. This involves communication between the design team to define suitable solution. Um, finally, I just would like to add uh, another way to minimize um, differential movement in tall mass timber building not achieved by detailing is to provide an, an effective uh, water management plan. Right, right. That's key in certainly minimizing the amount of shrinkage that we can expect to see, which is one of the, the timber movement paths that, that we discussed as a potential in tall mass timber buildings. Um, and I, you also mentioned something there I think is really important, which is not overestimating the amount of vertical movement that you'll see. As, as people will see once the paper comes out, um, there's some really great discussion that you have in there regarding the calculations for Brock Commons and intro, and then what was actually seen on site. And in many cases, it was what was seen on site was less than what was calculated. There are certainly ways to calculate it, but like you said, there are variables in all of these things. So, so knowing that going in, I think is, is a good thing uh, to have and having the adjustability within those details that can accommodate that. Um, is really key as well. So Josephine, thank you very much for, for having this discussion. Looking forward to the session at the Mass Timber Conference and the release of the paper coming here soon. So thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. Well, there you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed that discussion with Josephine on vertical movements and tall mass timber projects, how we can start to calculate what those movements are and how we can provide details that help minimize the effects that those movements have on the rest of the structure. If this is a topic that you've addressed on your mass timber projects, or perhaps you're looking at a new tall mass timber project down the road, please do reach out. That's why Woodworks is here, or a free resource to the building design, development, and construction communities. We are glad to help. Well, that's all for today's video. I thank you for making it to the end. And until next time, we'll see you later. Thank you.